let's go for a drive. What is going on guys? Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. So let me just give you some brief descriptions of what this channel will be about. So obviously, I'm sitting in my car. So yes, this will be a car channel. But I think what differs this channel from a lot of other channels on YouTube is that I don't know as much as a lot of other people on YouTube. Like, I'm still learning a lot of things from school or from different people working on cars, either in real life or on YouTube. So, by no means, I'm a skilled mechanic. But that doesn't mean that I don't have any experiences working on cars, because I do. But the whole purpose of this channel is to have you guys learn with me how to work on cars and watch me make mistakes so you don't make mistakes when you work on your car so this car is my daily driver um, I, I drive this car every day to school and to a lot of other places um, so let me just give you a brief tour of it right now so this is a 2014 Lexus CT200H uh, like I said this is my daily driver it's a great little car um, it gets like 42 miles per gallon if you drive it like a normal person which I don't um, but I still got like 33 34 so it uses the same engine as a Prius um, but Lexus is able to tune this car to have 10 more horsepower more than the Prius so I guess that's pretty neat recently I noticed that when I step on the brakes it has this squeaking and grinding noise from the front brakes so that can only be one problem but let's go ahead and um, start fixing and replacing the front uh, brake rotors and brake pads so the first thing we're going to do is to disconnect the battery from the car and in this case the battery in this car is in the trunk so let's get to the battery right now so after you remove all those plastic covers you get to your spare tire and on your right is your battery and you want to disconnect the negative side so not the red one that one that one's enough so let's go ahead and disconnect that so what i do is i use a microfiber towel to cover up um, the negative side so it doesn't touch any like metal part and you don't want that to happen so go ahead and lift this up kind of tricky but all right just cover it with this and should be good to go with the battery disconnected you're gonna want a jack this is a jack um, it's a basic one uh, it's low it's fits my car perfect because my car is kind of low so we're gonna use this jack to jack up the car and be sure to use jack stands because you don't want just the jack to hold your car in the air that's always not safe so get a jack also jack stands and also just to clear any confusions yes this is a jack but this this jack that comes with your car is only supposed to be used when you have a flat tire on the side of the road this is only for emergency use you don't want to use this to work on your car this is very unstable and not safe um this is again this is only for emergency use if you really want to work on your car 
get a proper jack. Once you have your jack, um, you're gonna wanna find a good jacking point um, for your specific car. You can find is you can find that information in your owner's manual, and um, you never ever wanna find a weak spot to jack up your car from because that can be dangerous and that can also damage your vehicle. So for this car, let's move the jack show you for this car a big portion of the side is this side skirt right here and you don't want to you don't want to place the jack under the side skirt because this is just like plastic there we go that's better so as you can see there's this metal plate this pinch weld here that has like two triangular cutouts and this is where you want to jack up your car from you know every car is different so follow your instructor i mean your owner's manual you always want to put your hand on your car so you can know when the car is kind of moving weirdly and you always want to look down to see if the jack if the jack moved or not in this case it has not moved which is good And also you want to pay attention to that jack stand on the on the left. So you want to make sure it doesn't like lift up on one side. So that could be dangerous. That could break the jack stand and um, damage your vehicle. So from what I'm seeing, I don't see any abnormal stuff going on. So we can continue. want to let the car down slowly very slow there we go so that was a success we didn't break the car we didn't everything looks normal to me we're good all right so yes I made a mistake I uh forgot to crack the lug nuts before I lift up the car so I had to do that all over again but now um, the lug nuts are cracked and um, put the jack stand under it already so let's go check out the new uh, brake rotors and brake pads alright so here they are so this time I'm using power stop Evolution Sport. Um, I think it's called the Z3023. It's carbon, carbon fiber ceramic. Uh, these are the pads. It comes with these rubber things and some new clips and some lubricant. And here's the pads. I already opened it, so. Um, Pretty nice pads. All right. So this is the new brake rotors. Now I know this might be a little overkill for the car. Um, it's both slotted and uh, drilled. So now I know it looks kind of riser, but um, I hope they can like like cool down better than the stock ones so that's why I bought them so go ahead and uh, remove all the lug nuts 
Oh, and before, before you do anything, forgot another thing. Before you do anything, you want to shake the car, all right? Just to make sure, just to make sure it doesn't um, move, and then you can proceed, all right? The wheel is now removed now notice I put that under the car just to um, be um, extra extra um, precautious just in case the jack stand fails we still have that so anyways let's um look at these um so this this is called the brake rotor the brake rotor this is what we will be changing we will not change the caliper so but we are going to change the brake pad inside there's one on this side and then one inside so now we get to remove this caliper right here now to make things easier for you you can always just turn the wheel towards the side you're working on so you can expose um, the bolts so it's kind of hard without power steering but so there's four bolts that you need to remove this top one for the brake caliper and the same one also for the caliper and then there's a bigger bolt right here one here and then one you don't want to remove that because you don't want to remove this one because that's the, the for the brake line there's one here this one this one is also the one you want to remove because these two big ones they are um, for the brake caliper uh, bracket so just those four all right so 14 for this one I already cracked it so I'm gonna take that out. You just wanna loosen this one. And also, there's one down here, right here. You also wanna crack this one loose. They're kinda hard, so. <clears throat> All right, kinda broke my arm a little bit. But hey, this is part of, part of the game. All right bolt right here as you can see you want to place it down here you want to you don't want to lose this and uh, pretty sure now you can move the yep get the brake caliper up all right this is gonna make your fingers super dirty but I just want to show you this is the, the caliper and this round thing is called the brake piston my car only has one piston i think the most brake pistons you can have on a car it's like six or eight something i'm pretty sure those porsches um they have six piston brakes but this this car only needs one so that makes things easier so this line right here as you can see you don't want to mess with that line that's your brake line um so let's just be careful so you want to carefully oh god this thing kind of heavy all right so you want to place it at a pretty safe place all right all right so with that caliper removed now now we want to remove this thing right here this one this one holds the brake pads in place and also the brake caliper so and um, there are two 17 millimeter bolts inside this one and this this one you don't want to you don't want to take this one off because this one doesn't do anything so I don't want to break my knuckle doing this so I'll take this off off camera and uh, I'll come back right now all right guys after 20 minutes of 
cursing, struggling. Finally got the the two 17 millimeter bolt off. I'm telling you, if you do, if you next time, if you guys are gonna do uh, something like this, uh, go and get yourself a uh, breaker bar because I I don't have one, and all I have all I have is this and also a torque wrench. Um, I didn't want to mess up my torque wrench. That's why I didn't use uh, the torque wrench. So uh, this, is, this is all I used. And um, they were on there tight. Like, I mean, tight, tight. Ooh, that sounds nice. That sounds nice. All right. So remove these. Now notice I... I'm wearing a thicker glove so I don't break my knuckle. Oh my god. All right, so this is the 17 millimeter that I was, that it was um, hard to take out. So there we go. So there's two, one, one at the top, one at the bottom. And uh, you definitely want a breaker bar for sure. Plus you don't want to mess up your fender also your paint because that would not be fun oh shit all right so this thing just fall off which is good i mean oh not good we still need this so um so now um we just need to take this rotor off which um should be quite easy hold on let me just turn the wheel back ah, Jesus. all right so now you have two options if your rotors are rusted like stuck you can have you can screw in two i believe this is a eight millimeter no Nah, it's M8, M8. So go ahead and get yourself some um, M8 screws from A's or Home Depot. Doesn't matter. Just um, screw them in and they should push the rotor off. But in this case, I don't want, I don't have the screws. So we're gonna use something different. Okay, I got my tool. This is it. A rubber hammer. It's not gonna damage anything. So let's see how we, if we can take the rotor off. All right, guys. So um, apparently this big boy didn't work. So I had to run to Ace and uh, get some um, M8 bolts. So now we have the rotor off and um, we're ready to put the new one in. So. Here's a look of, um, this is a, a dust shield. And um, yeah, that's basically it. All right, here's the, the new rotor in place. Notice I use two lug nuts to hold it in place because there's nothing holding it. Um, so now we um, need to put this back in and uh, everything reverse order and uh, should be good to go. All right, another thing you can do is um, to clean the brake caliper because over time that just collects like many dirt and stuff. So if you have like a, one of these uh, metal brushes, you can use them to um, just to brush off any just dirt and uh, debris. All right, I got this brake pad um, prepped, ready to go. So put this back in. Wait, yeah, like that. Don't know if you can see it, but oh, it's kind of hard to get it in. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, now 
you can't just leave it like this. This is not good. You want to hear a clicking sound. So push this in. Yep. I think that's in. I think. Yeah. Once it's like this, then you know it's in. So I'll just do the same thing with the other side. And um, yeah, perfect. So um, there we have it, guys. I got everything back and um, everything's very tight, which is good. You know, nothing's moving. Check the brake lines just to check if it's damaged or what what not all right it's not good yep now we just do the do the right side with the same procedure and uh, should be good to um reinstall the wheels back back on This can be sometimes tricky, but once you get it in, it's no problem. I mean, I think that's good. All right. Second one inside. Remember, it's easier if you put the bottom in first. So, let's see. So, get your caliper. And, um, you want to just place it, like, right here. So, an easier way to do it um, is to um, put the top bolt back into place so it holds the whole caliper for you. Grab this tool, all right, and uh, reuse your old brake pad. Um, and um, put this tool here. Oh wait, this is too long. All right, put, put it here. Wait, that's still too long. All right, put it here and um, put your new, uh, I mean your old brake pad back to help you um, compress your piston back. Now, just start turning it. Make sure it doesn't 
Yep. There you go. Just keep turning, and this piston is gonna it's gonna be pushed back in order to fit the thicker new uh, brake pads. So sometimes it can be kind of hard because. Now one way to uh, make this easier is to uh, open the brake fluid cap in your engine bay. That can help, but I don't think it's necessary in our case right here. Yep, I can see it moving. You can uh, compress this. Hold on, it's not focusing. Compress this back in a little bit. If it's not... Um, if it doesn't fit, so right here, you just want to like loosen this and uh, push this back in like that. This one also, so yeah. Now we can put the caliper back on. Alright, go well, very easy because um, you don't want to break anything. And also you might want to wear some gloves, not like me. Alright, and uh, put it back. Alright. it on there really tight because this is the most important part of your vehicle get some leverage mm. all right guys the brake job is complete got the car on the ground and uh, look at look at how much mess I made Look how much mass I made. God. That's not good. Alright, gotta clean that right now. But first look at the wheel. You can see it's pretty nice. Alright guys, all we have to do right now is um, tighten up the lug nuts and uh, go for a test drive. So to tighten up the lug nuts, you don't want to use the tool that came with, with your car. You want to use a proper um, torque wrench, something like this. Um, now this one is just perfect. It goes up to 80 um, foot-pound of torque, so and the car takes 80, so you just want to set it to 80 and. Um, get a proper um, torque spec, get a proper um, torque spec for your um, wheels. All right guys, um, so right now we are about to go for a test drive but before you do anything you want to go ahead and um, pump the brakes a lot of times one eternity later all right guys I just pumped my brakes and um, I rolled the car forward and also backwards. It seemed to work fine. I mean, I don't see anything, any warning lights, anything. Um, so we should be good to go. But um, yeah, it it I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it was an easy job. I mean, it takes a lot of time. I mean, for me, it took me like three hours. Um, to do um, the front wheels so you probably I probably have to double that time when I when I do all four wheels so that's 
it, it's definitely a time consuming job, but um, it's not hard, guys. It's not hard. So, yeah, right now we're going for a test drive. Um, all right, guys, we are at a secret spot where you can um, test out cars. So, basically, what we're gonna do is um, 60 to 10 for 10 times hard braking. Um, this could be fun because I've never done this before. So, here we go. All right, guys, do not listen to what I just said. Do not do 60 to 10 for 10 times. No, don't do that. I just looked up um, the real instruction. It says do 40 to 10 for five times and you should be good. Do not do 60 to 10 for 10 times. I repeat, do not do that. If you follow what I did, um. Well, let's just see what happens um, next. Alright guys, we are at Wendy's um, after uh, after all those braking tests, uh, I got kind of hungry. So um, after I did the, the brake tests, um, the rotors and the brake pads, they, they did smoke a little bit. I think it's because of the cold temperature outside. Um, but all in all, I I would say this is a um, success. I mean, I've been driving the car for almost 15 minutes now, and um, it feels way better than uh, before. Because before, when I step on the brake, it would just like vibrate and like. And now it's all smooth and stuff. Um, one thing that I do need to point out is that. Even though I, I put on aftermarket slotted and drilled rotors, um, they do not increase my braking performance. Um, it still kind of felt the same. Um, so they don't, they really don't um, increase your um, braking performance. So I just, I bought those, it, I bought those because um, I guess is it takes less time for them to um, cool down and it, plus they kind of look cool so that's those are two of the main reasons that I, I bought those rotors so yeah thank you for watching this video and I'm um, pretty sure all of us learned a lot um, even even for me um, like I said I made some mistakes and um, yeah always learning and uh, always learning and always always um, making mistakes and learn from your mistakes so all right until the next time so gonna have my burger now see ya